this week in VR, we have an absolute massive show for all of you. So first of all, Samson went to PAX East and he discusses what he saw there and also the people he hung out with. Elsewhere, there's a ton of VR news, including the first ever Quest 3 exclusive due out this fall, which is primarily made for mixed reality. And finally, we discussed the last three months of VR. VR in 2024, it's already been a full quarter. We're moving straight into quarter two. And we've also had some community members chime in with this as well. So we get into that discussion, all that and more. So let's talk Oculus. Let's Talk Oculus, a VR podcast, is proudly sponsored by the good folks at Patreon. If you want to support the show, join us on patreon.com forward slash Let's Talk Oculus. What's up, Oculus nerds? Welcome back to Let's Talk Oculus episode 130. I'm your host, as always, Dan from Playtest VR, and I'm joined by my co-host, Samson, who's rocking this really nice breeches top. Samson, step up. Step up again for the camera. Oh, yeah. The folks oh, on yeah. the video camera. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Brandon, Brandon VR, uh, yeah, who's so right just there to in the middle. To describe it to the audio listeners there, you've got it's the breeches poster, and you've got Brannon, who's a patron of the show, right in the middle. Samson, you're on the right side of that. And then who's that on the left? Uh, Creeper Betty VR. Creeper Betty VR as well. There's a nice little t-shirt he made you there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And shout out to Pollinator for, uh, I believe he helped with the thumbnail. So that's so cool. That's so cool. Samson, you had a big weekend. You went to PAX. How you doing? Uh, dude, I'd be, I am exhausted emotionally <laughs> physically i had so much fun it reminded me of when i was a child and you'd spend all weekend playing a video game and then spend all week discussing said video game at school or in college when you weren't doing homework or studying you were, i was playing a lot of video games good times among good times. other things but a lot of video games nonetheless and it felt like those times when you had no other care but but what what's going on in the world of video games and I was hanging out with uh, 20 to 30 of the PSVR without parole game cats. And we had a absolute blast. It was incredible. It was just a hangout in the in the hotel lobby, talking VR, talking video games, talking just life, really. And it was incredible to put put faces to a bunch of names uh, to meet 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 some people that I'd I'd never met before. Like, was there any, in, in was person, there any surprises? So many hugs. Was there any surprises? Was Mateo three one one this absolute giant that you never realized? So I did see him, and he did wear clothing that it was a bit tight. Is <laughs> he's, he's that guy? That guy holds some luggage, you know. He's strong. He's strong. And yeah, I did get I did get the chance to meet Mateo three one one and his lovely wife. They were kind enough to take me and Brandon out to dinner. Thank you. It was fantastic. I saw the Rough Talk dudes, father and son, and Amelia from their community, who's also in our community. Shout out to Amelia Patreon. Thank you. And it was just all around an amazing time. My feet are sore. I'm still sore, Dan. I, <laughs> I, I skipped Sunday. I had to go home. It, you're, we just stayed up so late, very little sleep. Luckily, the hotel had free breakfast, so I made sure I was awake for that. Nice. But then you just, you're walking around packs. I had my car there since I'm local. So I did a lot of driving people around. It, it was a lot. It was a lot. I don't do that much normally, but it was so much fun. Was it, was uh, and it, let me was just, there um, a lot of people there too. Like, was it quite packed on all of the days or was it just considerably packed on the weekend? Saturday was decidedly more crowded than all other days. Friday was decently crowded. And then Thursday and Sunday are pretty empty. They're not like empty, empty, but definitely the days where there aren't. The days if you want to not wait too long to to play demos, certainly to see the games. Yeah. 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 And then, but even outside the expo center floor, there's panels going on. There are rooms, people uh, speed running games, just rooms where you can play random games with people. Uh, so there's a whole lot outside the expo floor. Even Elver would learn had never played D and D before. They had tutorial D and D like That's built cool. where you had a dungeon master who knew everybody was first timers uh, yeah. to help guide guide yourself through. Um, there was three uh, VR booths, if you will. Uh, there was Pin City, which I played two years ago at PAX. I didn't play this year. It's a bowling game. 
Mm -hmm. uh, people were liking it to Headmaster bowling oh, version. Sick. I loved Headmaster. Uh, it's like one of my I never favorite games on PSVR 1. It's on PC as well. It's on Steam. Um, I think I played it on Steam when I had the Quest 2 as well. Uh, excellent, excellent title. It's such a fun game and it's a seated game too. I, I'd have, I highly recommend Samson. It's, it's probably really cheap too. Uh, to be I'll, honest. I'll to put it on that wish list. <clears throat> yeah, fair enough. Uh, there was also Captain Toonhead that was on PSVR 2. I didn't play because I didn't want Captain Toonhead at the convention to be my first experience in PSVR. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, the Game Cats were helping to run that booth for a while as it, it, there wasn't really anybody there to guide people into VR, which was, as we know, not the best. No. And then last, but definitely not least was silent slayer, which is made by shell games. Uh, make the expect you to die until you fall series. Uh, I played a lot of this one. I, I feel like they told me not to talk about something until April 4th or maybe their release date. But, I do think I can talk about generally it's a it's a puzzle game where you have to open a vampire's coffin to then kill them. You have to go really carefully and slowly. I thought it was all right. Uh, not really my thing. It's, I was about to say, you're, really, you're not a really horror heavy. person. <laughs> it's not even that it was that scary, although I didn't have sound uh, because mm. the expo center is so loud. So yeah. it's hard to really get immersed. But you just have to go so slow and carefully, Dan. I'm not that patient. I'm not that patient. Or yeah. I can be that patient like to give it one go. But then if I screw up and I don't kill the vampire and have to do all those same things again that mm -hmm. slow, I don't, I don't have the patience for that. So it kind of feels like it should be a, a mini game or something within a larger game, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's Did probably play... for some people. Some people could mm. enjoy is, it. Is that on Quest 3 or is that on PSVR? I played that on a Quest 3. It is nice. not... Uh, I think they're talking about maybe one day PSVR, but yeah, yeah. it was on Quest uh, it's on Quest 3. And Pin City had Quest 2s actually over there too. And you, you obviously tried a PlayStation VR 2 for the first time. How, how I was did. It? I was going to talk about that later on in the What We've Been Playing section. Oh, okay. We can come back to it at the end of the show. We can come back yeah. to the end of the show. A nice little tease. For those who are yeah. interested in Samsung's thoughts on the PSVR 2. Um, very well. But you had a great time. That's that's great to hear. And may, like, hope, maybe next year I can I can get there with you <clears throat> as well. I'll be going again next year. Sounds like uh, sounds like the GameCats <laughs> might be doing it again next year as well. And so, well, I think it looks like next year it might be in May. I did a quick Google search. I don't know that oh. they've really already planned it. But it'll be at least warmer in May because it was freaking cold yeah you yeah so you, you guys have got like the snow or just the cold and such where it was here, cold rain over here in vancouver it's it's getting a bit warmer but the problem is the cherry blossoms have sprung and i am dying internally oh, the pollen. Um, from hay fever and the pollen <laughs> yeah my eyes have been itchy it's been better now i bought some uh bought some bought some antihistamines and such and it's been it's been un under control for this part but Earlier this morning, I was like, uh oh, <laughs> it's going to be tough to talk <laughs> in this pod. But hey, are those, here we are. Are those over on the East Coast, too, in Toronto? Or, or no? The, the sure cherry they're... blossoms? No, I'm their sure cherry they're... blossoms are only in Vancouver or in BC. Uh, they might be on the like Seattle or, or Portland, potentially, too. But like, they're definitely only in Vancouver in terms of Canada. Yeah. And it's, it, people come here for the cherry blossoms. It's, it's, I, I mean, they're nice. Japan. But yeah, exactly right. You would think as walkabout players we are. <laughs> but actually, maybe Samson, this might be the perfect segue. You know, we'll talk a bit more about packs next week. Um, but this, let's go straight into the walkabout tournament. Now, before we get into it, for everyone, this is week four of the walkabout tournament. This is the penultimate week um, before we end things uh, next week. And um, if you still want to jump in and just, just have a go, okay, just join the Discord and there's a walkabout is it called Walkabout Stuff, the challenge? Uh, the, the channel, sorry. I think it's called Walkabout Stuff. It is called Walkabout Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So if you go into there, you can... Um, it's got the all the Walkabout Stuff, Dan. The name checks out. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, name checks out. Um, 
there will be prizes, uh, some participation prizes uh, for everyone who's joined, who's played for every one of those weeks. Um, speaking of the prizes from the first one, though, Samson, I have finally sent out prizes. Um, oh boy! I, I sent out Destiny a walkabout T-shirt. Well, not a walkabout T-shirt. It's it's my own design. It's basically the walkabout edition of our LTO T-shirt. He should get that in the next week. And for everyone else who won prizes for that first week, um, you, I will send yours this week. I've been, you, you're going to like it once I once I send it to you. It took a while, <laughs> but I've 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 almost perfected the design, uh, and you're going to like it. Yeah, it's this took is a while. like this is like six months before anyone expected anything. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're way early. <laughs> I was trying to get it done before the end of the next tournament, and uh, I think <laughs> on Sunday I made quite a lot of progress, and I was like, okay. I think I finally got it of what this little little like gift will be, and I'm gonna use because I like it so much. Um, for the giveaway winners after week five, I'll also do the same basically gift because I think it's a great little uh, yes. thing to send out. But um, I will not tell you what it is. We'll let let the surprise. We'll, you know, once someone gets it and posts it on the Discord, they we can go from there. <laughs> we can go from there. <laughs> but Samson, let's let's go. We got week four. We had um Labyrinth Easy and Tethy Station Hard. Not going to lie, this might be the hardest week that we've ever had in the walkabout because Labyrinth Easy is a very hard course and Tethy's Hard is I mean <laughs> everybody knows yeah. how hard Tethy's Hard is. So yeah, Samson, have you got any facts for this one for this week or are we going straight? Oh, I've got the- some facts. I was ready to go straight into it, but I I do have some facts. So this week we had 27 hole-in-ones. We had 233 birdies and 180 pars. Nice. Nice. That sounds like a lot. Um, I'm intrigued to see what uh we should do like maybe after the after week five like see what what course was the one with the most hole in ones or something because we have those yeah, stats that's there. where we start yeah analyzing using the stats yeah for some data science analysis. stuff yeah yeah analytics and such anyway give it's us labyrinth analytic, easy yeah, precisely <laughs> labyrinth easy tied for fifth place with minus 17 was the maestro and rocking horse brat Tied for fourth place with minus 18, Guido and myself, Samson. Nice. There this we is go. my best score ever. Uh, so obviously, I, uh, I almost I didn't make it to the top three though with my best score ever. But <laughs> I was still happy, still proud. Anyway, still third place at minus 22 was Destiny 11. Nice. In second place at minus 23 was Parody for Life. And, Dan, you already know, because in first place, at minus 25, was Matt 916. Incredible. Incredible. In- incredible scores. Um, just want to point out a couple things. One, apologies for last week. Um, I, sp- I put guide, not Guido. Um, obviously, <laughs> that was an autocorrect when... Because I copy the, I have to like retype in the table into the into the software, just uh, into the editing, just so it formats right. Um, um, so I I I obviously auto corrected Guido to guide, <laughs> and I think I missed three people. I, I remember missing Rock and Horse Brat. I missed Cobalt Dave. I think I missed one more person as yeah, well. I think it was Parody for Life. Yeah, Parody for Life. I think she was first... saying you missed their. Uh, their you missed their. Yeah, I their missed little... like a little chunk. I just completely. Yeah. I thought I was like, that's low. It's normally like twenty people, and I put eighteen. But I was just like, <laughs> okay, that's just how it is. And yeah, I, I think I think that's not my first. I think in the first week, I think I missed D Max off the leaderboard too. So it's, uh, it's apologies. Okay, man. Okay. Um. Yeah, we'll uh we'll try and brush it up this time. But impressive scores, Samson. That minus eighteen is no joke on Labyrinth Easy. That's a quite that's quite impressive. Thank you. you know. I was very proud. I was yeah. very proud. And also before we get into hard, I just want to give a shout out to Matt nine one six. Uh, he posted um a couple courses that he pre recorded um on the walkabout stuff uh Discord. I. Do forget, Samson, do you know what those courses are on top of your head? Can you, have you got the Discord up? I forget exactly which ones he posted. I thought they were for the last week, uh, the last week's courses. Yeah, they yeah. were Arizona, Easy, and uh, what was the other one we did? Cherry Blossom. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. I'm, he also, I he also did, um, 
He also did Labyrinth Easy. Sorry, he also did do Labyrinth Easy and Tethys Hard as well. He's put the video up for those on his Google Drive. It's in the walkabout stuff for these courses as well. Um, I was just looking at my DMs. He DM'd me about them too. So um, he did like a bit of a walkthrough of, of the course. Um, it wasn't his actual scores that he posted, but... Um, just a bit of a walkthrough so if you just want to you know obviously you can always hang out with matt 916 is really open to and, and play um go through the holes and, and courses with him but he's got those videos up there now in our discord so if you want to see how labyrinth easy was done or tethys hard was done um to a certain degree definitely check out those, those videos it's on the google drive link on the walkabout stuff channel um and without further ado Boom. samson give us uh give us the next one Let's get it hard in Tethy's station, where, in fifth place with minus ten. Also, what a, what a juxtaposition, right? Minus ten. It, the scores are just so much. The easy and hard juxtaposition is 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 really <laughs> emphasized this week. I feel. Anyway, <laughs> in fifth place with minus ten was Rock and Horse Brad, and in fourth place with minus eleven was the Spry guy. In third place. With my, no ties either. In third place, with minus 14, was Destiny 11. In second place, with minus 15, was Parody for Life. And in first place, with minus 20, freaking 1, was Matt 916, who got a 3 on Tethy 17, which I believe Tethy 17 is the one where you, you got to take like a left turn, then yeah. a right turn, and you can kind of cut across that really narrow one. So I'm pretty certain it means he hit that along that really narrow one into the hole. He must have, because you have to start off and you go off this like ramp, right? And he yeah. must have hit the ramp perfectly where it laid him up like perfectly in line with the thin. Then he got yeah. it over the thin and then he tapped it in for, I guess, would be a, a eagle or birdie, probably an eagle probably. Um, that's incredibly impressive, uh, to be honest on that, on that hole, but yeah, overall five. the courses, uh, the, the courses, the scores overall is impressive and, and look at Spry guy just, just sneaking in there at, at fourth place, you know, where, where did Spry guy come in, in, in the labyrinth easy? He wasn't on the, on the top five there. Uh, Spry guy is at minus, minus 10. Min- uh, minus 10. Okay. Yeah. I think Spry guy, uh, spent all his spryness on the Tethys hard kind of like the inverse of me i did all labyrinth i was i was not i was plus seven i think on Tethys hard (laughs) you're like there's no point i could play this course 20 times a day and i'll still probably barely make it to the uh yeah it's like it's getting them all all the good shots on the same is round is very hard on Tethys. i feel yeah I can't um, believe Matt. Like these scores are really good, but Matt nine one six was minus twenty one. Like the next one was parody with a, a credible minus fifteen, and that's six it's shots. Six shots. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. That's, that's so wild. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Samson, I what do, we got? In, all gone. I do think uh, this might have been the first time. I'll have to go back and check. But the first time we had the top three was the exact same on both easy and hard. Mm, mm. In Sash. the same order. Sounds like back to our first walkabout days where we had Destiny, yeah, right? Parody for Life, and Cobalt Dave, which would be the main ones up until Rock and Horse Brat found the channel and yeah. uh, went in. Um, Unfortunately for, or rather fortunately for everybody else, Dave was awfully busy this week. Didn't have time to uh, really fine tune those store- scores. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fine. Now, everyone now who's played played four weeks um is in the participation giveaway for the the exciting potential prize i don't want to say it. i want to say it but i don't want to say it yet um samson send us home what we got for next week uh dan next week we have coyote valley easy and mm. atlantis hard Ooh. I wanted to go with the cool, beautiful <laughs> colors of Atlantis. Yeah, I, I was, I'm not gonna lie. I would say personally, yeah, this might be the same for you. I'd say those both those courses are probably up there in the top five walkabout courses of all time, in my opinion. There's some um, good ones. So especially Atlantis Hard, you know, Curative Valley. So amazing um for those so if you've not tried this before definitely you could. If you're not on Discord, that's fine. You can always DM Samson. Um, via the quest or via on twitter as well if you or x rather 
I always forget that. It's basically Twitter. Just keep calling it Twitter. That's Screw always- Elon. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm definitely not great at checking those DMs, but yeah, I'll get it to them. I'll get to them. Yeah, certainly once a week. Only once a week. All right, let's get into. Uh, let's going to change things up this week, um, and let's get in straight into our, our main topic uh, of the show. Because um, it being LTO 130, that's a fun number. You know, 130 seems like a like a big number. It's not as big as 150. It's not as big as 200, but it's still it's still up there. And and 130 comes at the perfect time because we are we basically finished Q1 of 2024. You know, it's pretty it's pretty much wrapped up here. We were Done. a quarter away already, um, which is insane. And it's been six months since the Quest 3 as well, um, which you know, which is insane. It feels like things are just happening really quickly. So, what I wanted to talk about today is kind of reflect on the last three months of our our VRing, like just to critique ourselves in a way and just ask like what we really liked. Obviously, you've listened to the show. You I'm not obviously- critiquing myself. I'll critique you, though. <laughs> you can critique me. My VR has been poor, but we'll get into that. Um, we go through the last three months and obviously what we were excited, what we were slightly disappointed potentially, and obviously discuss what we're looking forward to moving forward or, or such or specific games. Now, this might not be games that are coming out, but it might just be like games that's been on the backlog that we may be wanting to wanting to want to play and such. Now, I did ask the community um, in Discord to to ask what any of their, you know, what their critique was in a, in a way or, or their last three months was like. I mean, I got three, four people, sorry, four people who wrote in. Um, so I want to start off with... I'm going to start off with shoes because I really like that name. It's so, you know, it's just, it's, I've never seen that I mean, type of name. It's, it's great. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, okay. So also shoes are a great article of clothing. It was a great what? Sorry. Shoes are a great article. It's great clothing. Oh, great know? article. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Um, anyway, so Shoes wrote into the Discord. He said, uh, VR in 2024 for me has been an interesting one. In 2023, I went all in on VR and the Quest was my gaming platform of choice. Having played 120 different VR games. I love how he's got a proper running total there. I That's hope that number is accurate. Um, having played 120 different VR games, also blogging about them, kind of burned me out in VR and got me looking at other gaming options. Whilst I still play VR with my friends, mostly PokerStars, Golf Plus, and Walkabout, I do look forward to playing some of the titles like BorderBots and Metropolis 2 down the line. I was a huge fan of Pl- Plutosphere, um, and the shutting down of that surface w- a service was a bummer. The service that gave me a chance to play Half-Life Addicts amongst other a great PC VR games. Overall, I still enjoy VR, but I just needed a time a bit a, a bit of time away, and I'm working on my flat screen backlog. And that's that's you know first of all, like, there's a couple things I just wanted to, to pick out there. Um, playing 120 games across 2023 is going to burn anyone out, let alone <laughs> <laughs> VR. Like Samson, I know you've and you you probably played 120 games um, too. You're probably up there. You know, I remember your your quest certainly not stat. to completion certainly not to completion um i so i remember seeing your hours that you played with the quest last year and those quest stats <laughs> they were up there just like shoes um i'm interested in the shoes's blog here so he's blogged about all of his games um shoes if you want to dm me your blog or something i can put it in the description um obviously i think I'm i've saying- seen it in the uh in the rough talk discord somewhere yeah that's that's fair enough um, I resonate on that a little bit. He's looking forward to playing Border Bots and, and Retropolis 2. Obviously, Border Bots is a game that came out um, last month, and, and Samson, you're the one who who played that. You've not played too much of it, right? You've just no, played it just a little bit. No, just at one time. i got to get back in. I've been freaking too busy the last two weeks. I haven't really... Uh, even though typing in, I, I you know, what I've been playing, I have played a little bit, but certainly this week was one of my lowest, I think, in, in quite some time at Potting. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, he, he's right about Plutosphere, though. Um, I never got a chance to try Plutosphere because it, my ping was just too far away, I think. Just being in Canada, the ping was just too much to make it even worthwhile. But um, have you ever, ever tried Plutosphere or tried any of the other, like, is it Shadow Gaming PC or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, Dan, when we started this pod, mm-hmm. I think I was doing the Shadow PC gaming. That was uh, mm-hmm. how I originally got into PC vr nice nice and it worked well for you back then right or it worked 
It just worked. It worked <laughs> sometimes. Uh, frame bad. issues were really because at that time I was streaming the PC and I was using virtual desktop, so it's like double streaming. Yeah. I remember trying Squadrons and it was just way too terrible frame rate, but I do feel like it worked with some things. I don't remember what. It was a long time ago. I'm not even sure it still exists anymore as a company or yeah, you know, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Shadow I, I couldn't try Shadow either. The ping was too much, but um the fact that it got a chance to play Half-Life Alex is is great and it's such a I think having such a, a streaming option for PC VR games it would be fantastic if it, if it was continued, you know, because all of the like these these games require a, a big rig when it comes to a, um, a PC. Um, so no one's really going to play really Half Life Alex. No one's really going to play Lone Echo One or Two or these games that Stormlands is another one that these games that are kind of locked behind the PC platform. Um, and having something like well, that would be great. So yeah, thanks, Shoes. I appreciate you um, writing into the show. I'm going to throw another one out there. I'm going to throw a, a smaller one here. Stuart, uh, who wrote in the Discord, he says, my favorite VR experience is playing Pro Era 2. You get to play as a quarterback of your favorite NFL team. You truly feel like the under center, under center, in a crowded stadium, ready to pass to your receivers. And with the game, with this game, I could truly uh, fulfill my dream to be the quarterback and the lead my Philadelphia Eagles to a Super Bowl win and lift up that Lombardi trophy. That is my favorite VR experience. Very experienced films. Sam, did you play any more Pro Era 2? Did you ever get into it? No, I haven't played more of it. And I've never even played a full game, I don't think. I just, I've got into the mini games when I got into it. You know, the- What are you doing? Get in the, the game. dodging the yellow little- Yeah, I don't know. It's like, I'd, if I'm gonna do that, I really feel like I'd just play Madden. The no playing <laughs> on defense thing. But yeah, I ought to give it a try before I talk too much. I had a but great yeah, time with Pro Era One. Fine. Like Pro Era One, I had a great time with it. Um, it was You're flawed. Canadian. You're it's British flawed. Canadian. You, exactly. You be... And I was having a great time. So imagine you as an American with your beloved Patriots who have won so many titles. You know, they you do need a new quarterback. Maybe me. There you go. Maybe maybe Samson. Um, but yeah, our Pro Era was really yeah. good. I am I am happy. You know that people enjoy it. Yeah. Never yeah. gonna I'm never gonna rain on someone's parade for that for sure before we go into the other two though samson let, let's talk let's talk about our last three months uh, a little bit um there uh, obviously you've got a lot of vr in um over these the last three months just to show a few highlights of these the bigger titles that or i say bigger titles i'll say like the the newsworthy titles that came out um in january we had bulletstorm vr which was an utter which disappointment played. terrible terrible game um absolutely awful um and got mostly negative res- reviews on steam as well um and you know what these steam reviewers are like uh Ret- retropolis 2 also came out in january which has been on my quest library for ages um i love the retropolis one have you did you ever jump into the second one not the second oh, no. one it is i think it's in my library though yeah it's in my library too uh and then maybe the standout game of the last three months uh underdogs came out in january underdogs did you roll credits on underdogs or you got really close no i just got i lost that final boss you lost and then never went back i guess that's a lot of, oh i've gone back bit. i just haven't gotten that far okay yeah fair enough uh february we had uh border bots vr um i'll was, I was say that just because i remember you talking about it um ghost of tabor came out which is pretty big for a lot of people obviously not samson um who was, who was not the fan um stranger things came out which was um, it's hard for me to say so much of a disappointment. I ended up just refunding it. I didn't really want to play more of it. Um, I'm intrigued to see what everyone else's ideas were from the community. Some folks um, liked it, I think. Yeah, I don't think it was that bad um, critically. Like it was like a, a mixed in the end. Like some folks didn't like it, some folks did like it, and such. It wasn't like Bulletstorm VR, which was pretty much stand straight up. This is this is trash. Hey, Mateo um, liked it, I think. Those yeah, exactly. people who, who who said it was just fun. It was fun killing of yeah. a few hours. Sometimes in VR, that's all you want. That's, that's, that's all you want. Um, and then in March, uh, we got Humanity, which is still a game that I need to play. This is a, like, I think Samson, you mentioned it was like a Lemmings kind of puzzler. 
Um, that was on PSVR 2 uh, originally. Uh, you can play that in flat screen as well, uh, but it's now on in Quest as well. I don't think we ever spoke about it, but I do have it on my library and I should play it soon. Uh, obviously, Max Mustard um, came out, which is, is worth talking about of how big and great that platformer is. Yeah. Yeah, and then obviously Sky Climb comes out uh, this this week as well uh, as of as of recording as well. We obviously had the um, developers on um, VR so, Monkey, yeah, with VR Monkey and such. So overall, these these last three months has been it's been okay uh, in terms of releases. It's been it's been fine. I think the biggest one is Underdogs, right? Of of how good and surprisingly good that game was. It came out with an absolute bang. <clears throat> Yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of Underdogs, but Max Mustard was great as well. Uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of my last six months have not been the majority new releases. I've spent a lot of time continuing to play Breachers, Population 1, Synth Riders, and, and Grid Legends, which has sort of fallen off now as yeah. of more recently, but certainly a, a good amount of it in January and February. Or whenever I started it, uh, and then with the Quest Three, I've, I've been getting into a lot more mixed reality at, at work. It's it's opened up eleven table tennis and synth, synth riders, so I can see around me, mm-hmm. and uh, and just get, stop when I need to. I finished the Yuki mixed reality, and as it's warming up, it's just going to get more and more racket clubby uh, around these parts of town. I think. And so that's definitely been a big change in the last six months of using a lot more mixed reality. Yeah, yeah, that's very fair enough. Um, I think, with, I mean, as everyone knows, I was watching this show, I think my VR has been slowly declining um, over the last month or so. I think in January, I started off hot, um, crushing Assassin's Creed in December going into January and then got Bulletstorm. And- Did you finish it? No, I still. I'm only. I'm only okay. three. I'm only three chapters away, yeah, though. Okay, you're close. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only three chapters away, and it literally. I feel like if I, you know, this this weekend Easter Easter Sunday, uh, if I pick this up and just played for like two hours, I would finish that game at that point, or maybe three hours max, and it's done. But um, yeah, it's on the list. It's, it's on the list. I do. I do want to get into it more. Um, Obviously, I played a bunch of Underdogs, uh, which which was uh, amazing um, to play. Uh, Tiger Blade, I mentioned last week. Uh, still, uh, I played a bunch of that this week, and I still love that game. I think everyone should try it. Uh, Tiger Blade is fantastic um, and such. And uh, another one with Max Mustard, as we mentioned. I really want to get into Max Mustard. But yeah, my VRing's been kind of lackluster over this year like ever since february i would say um it's kind of dropped down a little bit um i don't really know why maybe maybe i'm just playing the flat screen more i i can i can resonate a little bit with um shoes a little bit obviously i didn't play 120 vr games last year um, but i definitely played my my well, fair share how of much games of the of the portal have you been playing a lot a lot well, there, there you go a lot you know it's just something about you know when it comes to v- it comes, I was listening to a podcast about the PlayStation VR uh, earlier, and they made a really good point where, when it comes to VR, one of the main things and probably the main thing is convenience. You know, um, of getting people to play it. Like, it, how convenient is it to put it on? And uh, a lot of they were talking about how the PSVR 2's kind of downfall. Like, obviously, we have like dedicated PSVR two. Um, lovers out there and that's great you know people who love that console love that system and and that's amazing to see um, but overall by the numbers with it like stopping production and all that stuff like it's it's kind of on the decline a little bit um, or never really got up and a lot of people uh, they're saying on the podcast sorry is that it's it's convenience um, it's where like the, the there's a cable there's the need to play it in your living room there's a need to you know the you're, you're tethered and it makes a big difference to something like the quest three where you can play it anyway or anyway all that to say is that <laughs> adding the convenience of a playstation portal that i can play with my bed is is taking a lot of my gaming time away where i can just lay down and play I've been, i'm just crushing ratchet and clank right now and um getting I mean, very close quest has lay down mode now dan not it's quest three mode. not quest three not quest three only quest two got it yeah, Quest 2 and Quest Pro got it. Quest 3 didn't get it yet. They said they're still working on it for Quest 3. 
That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, one thing's for sure. Over these last three months, um, I've been trying out a lot of a lot of like different little tiny apps and and straps and such. Like, obviously, we've been rocking the Bobo, trying out a bunch of accessories that've been um, coming out, and the Bobo VR has definitely been my favorite head strap over this this year and such, and playing with that and. Um, yeah, accessory rise. I've been definitely testing it out and trying it, but I would, I still, I would really want to get into more VR games. As I still want to really get into Max Mustard and finish Assassin's Creed and such, and I'm hoping to do that. Um, which kind of ties me into the things that we're kind of looking forward um, in the next three months or, or or beyond. I think mainly for me is playing more is something that I just need to do. I'm just going to try and like go. Okay, yeah, on a Tuesday night. I have no excuse. I could just go in and play and enjoy myself. Sometimes I have a problem where I feel like I need to do things, like do things for the podcast, do things elsewhere in the personal. And I don't playing games is for the podcast. It is for the podcast. Yeah, but so, I, sometimes I just don't let myself just sit down and play the game. I just I find so, so guilty sometimes. Um, there's a new uh, there's a new golf plus course, Dan. There is. There was um, came out this weekend. Yeah, it did. Um, so in, in things looking forward to in the next three months, uh, I think in terms of game wise, uh, Metro Awakening VR is definitely um, something I'm intrigued. Is that with. due to come out that quickly? Uh, not in the next three months. It, it just okay. says 2024, but um, I, I don't think it will come out till the end of the year yet. But like, it's just one of those things that if I'm just thinking about what I'm looking forward to is yeah. is that game in particular because I think it suits so well to VR. I mean, I, I know Samson, you've not really played a Metro game before, but yeah, I don't even um, know what kind of game it is really. Yeah, Metro is an actual Metro, Metro is a book, um, and there's like two, maybe three retro sounds ga- boring retro games. um but it's basically a shooter um and it's it's kind of it's more of a slower paced shooter um rather than something fast like a bullet storm vr for example um it's it's much more slow paced uh narrative driven and such and i think something like that would bode well i'm thinking something like a, a resident evil um in terms of you know, some of the Resident Evil 4, for example, uh, uh, it's like, oh, Resident Evil 8, like they're action oriented kind of horror games. And Metro Awakening is, it is technically a horror game as well. It's more, you know, it's got that ambient horror to it and such. I wouldn't say it's a, it's an exact horror game, but it's definitely in the horror realm. You'll get scared, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited for that kind of slower paced game, but I'm not going to lie. What if it's got spiders? That's fine. I can shoot them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like overall like i just i think for me i just need to get more into into vr and actually just not feel guilty in time of playing it and be like no i'm playing this game and having a having a great time but um anything about, that you're what you're about going? supernatural then supernatural i've not really got into too much either Would i've got into it over in? the yeah. over the last two months but no, I, I don't want to do Supernatural for fit. I just want to get into like proper VR gaming and really get back <laughs> into that crowd. But Sam, so is there anything like you're looking forward to um, coming up or like if there are any, any games in your backlog that you're looking forward to playing? Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to some of the things in my backlog. I want to just keep chipping away at things. I'm looking, you know, Grid Legends got to chip away at that. I hope... I hope for another DLC for Synth Riders. Uh, you know, I've just been playing the, the shit out of that one. Mm-hmm. I want... What else do I want? Yeah, what do I, you want? I want more Breachers map, probably. Ranked mode. Uh, I, there's a new Pop 1 map coming out semi-soon. Excited for mm-hmm. that. There's, there's, there's too much to play. There's too much to play in VR. And anybody who says otherwise needs to needs to read <laughs> all the games that there are to play because they're all there is, there is so many good games on that. Um, yeah, people who say there's no games on VR just just don't really know. <laughs> just they just don't know. Um, let's get into the other two community uh, driven answers here. Um, <clears throat> we got Snickers all Man. day. Oh, you want so me to what? read one? Or you, you want? Yeah, you go for it. Why don't you take Snickers and I'll read that long one. (laughs) Yeah, you rate the long one. Uh, Snickers all day, he wrote in, said VR VR this year has been pretty good um, for his first year into VR. 
Uh, it basically made him poor, he said. Um, Ghost of Tabor, <laughs> Contractors, Vale, Stormland awaited re- uh, Stormlands awaited return, uh, and Contractors Showdown has been his main games. Uh, Into the Radius, Breachers, and Pavlov on PC are in my backlog. They are just too expensive. Um, definitely looking forward to the next Ghost of Tabor DLC, Contractors Showdown, and Silent North possible release. Um, Into the Radius has been one that's always been in my backlog too. I bought that game like two years ago. Uh, I do and remember you buying, it and you started it too, right? You got. I started it, and then I just never, I just never played more of it. I just, it's one of those games where because of the mood, um, the atmospheric mood is like you kind of need to be in the mood to play it. It's one of those games, right, where you just don't throw it on. You're like, you got to be in that mood to play this game. Um, yeah, and I just never, I just never went in. The new one's supposed to be co-op. It probably has a little more appeal to me. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know that it's got it's got some Ghost of Tavor vibe to me, right? Like really the the guns and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things to do that yeah. can go but, wrong. But single player uh, into the radius, you know. So, um, the think the second one is due for 2025. I want to say. I think they're aiming. To- I don't know. That's in there looking, hopefully, to get it end of 2024. But I think they said uh, realistically it's 2025. But yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks for writing in Snickers all day. First year in VR. That's very exciting. So much so much for you to play. So much for you to play. Um, Samson, let's, uh, you can go for the, the last one here. Yeah. All right. From Helio Spectre, who wrote into the Discord. Hey, Dan. Um, what am I, chap liver? No, hey, no, you, he, asked, you asked the question. You asked the he, question. I get he it. DM'd me. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, Dan. Been listening to LTO for the past year or so. Thank you. Pre ordered the Quest 3, which is the first HMD I've owned. Though I played a fair amount of someone else's Quest 2. Quest 3 has been truly awesome. I've been using it almost every day since release. Some of my favorites RE4. It looks so good on Quest 3 especially with the QGO going. The QGO? What's the QGO, Dan? I actually don't know what the QGO is either. Um, Can you talk? Well, in your DMs, (laughs) you ask them. All right, I'll keep going. Doom 3 Quest. Team Beef is amazing, and I can't believe the ports they've accomplished. Amen to that. They're currently working on, I think, a Tomb Raider one. um, He said the, the QGO is the Quest Games Optimizer. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah, I have heard about that. I've heard it can make some things kind of run frame rate wise poor, but yeah, RE4 is probably a good one for that. Mm. Good call. Good call, Dan. Thanks for the Google. They said, um, As- uh, with that, sorry, before you continue, um, with the Quest, uh, I've not tried the Quest Games Optimizer, but people are like bigging up Walkabout Mini Golf with the Quest Game Optimizer. They said it looks absolutely phenomenal um, with it. Uh, also, I thought Walkabout was getting a Quest 3 upgrade soon. But anyway, continue. I'm going off a tangent. Continue. <laughs> yeah. I'll let, I'll let it slide. <laughs> it's just, and, it's and the Walkabout looks great already. Anyway, Asgard's yeah. Rat 2, finished the story mode. Great work. That's, that's pretty legendary. Thoroughly enjoyed and really feel like this one lived up to the hype. Wow. 60 Walking hours. Dead. Yeah, right? I'm, hey, I'm curious how long it took. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, Walking Dead saves the sinners. Never saw the Quest Two version, but based on videos, I'm amazed at how much better the Quest Three version looks and plays. Mm-hmm. Dra- uh, I haven't played that one yet on Quest. I got it. I actually on PC. never. I never did it either. I, I have. I have it as well because I have the original version. It's just an update, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I'm assuming yeah. it looks closer to the Quest, uh, to the PlayStation VR version. But yeah, I don't know. I'm and more play. enemies, probably. Yep. Dragon, I doubt it's as good as the PlayStation VR version, but yeah. I don't know. Closer, I don't think the PlayStation VR 2 version of the first game got upgraded properly. Like it was more just it's it's ported to it rather than a full on upgrade. I'm not too sure. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, on I don't that. Know it's been a long time since play I played it. that system. Anyway. And moving right along, Dragon Fist VR Kung Fu. As a martial artist, I love this game. Thought I would end up refunding as it looks a bit janky, but totally took me by surprise and is definitely a current favorite. It's like Blade and Sorcery, Thrill the Fight, and Virtual Fighter all got together to watch classic Kung Fu, Kung Fu films. Mm. 
kind of selling me on it a bit. Uh, I have heard people talk about this one positively in the Rough Talk Discord a good amount as well. Mm. And then T for God, hugely innovative game in my opinion. The movement mechanics are mind blowing. And for those that don't know, T for God is the room scale game where you're basically doing circles and lines around your room, but it feels like you're traversing many, many, many distances and places. Uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool game. It does work way better with a big space, yeah. but it can work in a smaller space. Yeah. And I, things... That game, and um, sorry, on, on that game, the Eye of the Temple just got a Quest 3 update. Um, it did. I don't think I put week. that on the news today, but yeah, it just got a Quest 3 update. So sim- oh, different game, but room scale as well. And things Helio Spectre is excited to get someday soon. Genotype, Propagation Paradise Hotel, Underdogs, and Light Brigade. And they are looking forward to Behemoth, Wanderer, Metro, Awakening, and Defy. Nice. Nice. Um, Light Brigade has always been one that's on my list as well, but I should stop Same buying these. the games. I should actually really play them first um before I buy him. but light brigade's always been on my list as well um did you pick it up over christmas over the sale yeah i think i got that one uh i think i picked it up on steam i forget i might have just wanted it on sale but i forget which it's one it's to look really nice on pc and um yeah. on playstation to be honest um, there's some pretty good games uh helio specters been playing though glad glad they've been enjoying it yeah i i want to just um the big shout out is obviously as God's wrath Two that you finish the story mode. That's very impressive. And I can see Helio is just like, you can tell from the games that he's played and how much he's played for this, you know, the, since the quest three came out. So I guess six months ago, um, it, it makes, it inspires me to get back into VR as much as Helio, <laughs> because like, this is how I felt when I first had, um, the quest two, when I first got my hands on, uh, the VR hardware, and I was in it every single day playing walkabout, uh, walkabouts for saints and sinners and such, for example, and uh, trying all these different games. So yeah, a nice one, Helio. I, I'm I kind of really want to try Dragon's Fist now that you speak about it. It seems it sounds really cool, um, to be honest. Uh, I'm no martial artist, but I've I've <laughs> seen a few few Bruce Lee films. You could you, well uh, that thrill the fight is your biggest video, right? You gotta you can do a new one, add in Dragon Fist. That's true. That's true. Um, and the other fight is is wicked. And that we should get a second one soon this year. Actually, that should be on the anticipation list. The other fight too. Um, I'll believe it coming. when I see it. Fair enough. Have you tried the T for God? Did you get get a, you yeah? Try I've that tried T for God. Yeah. Fair enough. How was that? Like, what yep. was your what was your play space for it? Like, how big was it roughly? Like, did you have a lot a lot of space, or did you just make it work? I didn't have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of space, but I had a decent, a decent amount of space. Uh, it's a game I'll probably want to try again when it's warmer again to outside. Oh, so you can try it outside and such. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Mm, Just go to the good. park, Dan. Just go to the park. Well, my, to be, I, should, I should have no excuse. My, my, one of my housemates, he is the gym teacher at a elementary school. Do you have, and do you have a gym? Yeah, exactly. And he's on spring break right now. So I'm like, I could technically use your gym for these. Bro. These, I know, right? I, I don't know. I know. You have I a whole YouTube this. video there too. That's content. That's content. That's content right there, honestly. But yeah, no, thank you so much, Helio. And thanks to Shoes, Stewart and Snickers All Day who also wrote in. Uh, it's great to hear um, your stories and how much you've been playing in VR and, and what, what you've been really liking. And obviously Stuart just liking NFL pro era. And I love it. I love the passion for it. Um, and such, but, um, for those of you, no, 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 for those of you who didn't write in or such, feel free to obviously write in, in the discord or write in, in the comments on YouTube as well. And let us know, um, some of the games that you've played so far and you've been really liking and some of the stuff that you're anticipating, or if you're like me and just, just really want to get back into more and just just haven't for whatever reasons just let us know let us know um perfect all right that will do for for part one and part two we will jump into the vr news where we have quite a few news stories to to cover so so we'll see you then hey 
We know public lobbies and VR games can be a bit toxic, feel a bit empty at times. That's why we created the Let's Talk Oculus Discord, a friendly community that you can join for multiplayer meetups, general VR chat, the game, and chat about VR, fitness motivation, and there's even a very impressive 3D printing channel. Join over 100 of our community members in the Let's Talk Oculus Discord for free. The link is right in the description. All right, welcome back to part two, where we have nine VR news stories to cover. And Samson, let's get straight into it. The first one is Starship Home, which is going to be our first proper Quest 3 exclusive, okay? So this just got announced uh, recently. I think it was at GDC. Um, I didn't write that down. That's that's my, that's my bad. Um, but essentially, this is a MR, mixed reality adventure, that turns your living room into a starship. And it uses the 3D mesh of the Quest 3's depth sensor to do this. Um, and therefore, it's not available on the Quest 2 or the, the Quest Pro. Um, and obviously also with a truly mixed reality game on the Quest 2, it's just not going to look as good because of the, the black and white and such. So yeah. I've got a quote here because um, they spoke to Upload VR and I want to read it out. So um, the, cre- the, the founder, Doug North, um, uh, Doug North Cook is his full name, um, said to Upload mm-hmm. VR, Uh, Building a rich, meaningful, and forward-looking mixed reality experience that requires features that are only available on Quest 3. Uh, Starship Home is uh, is our attempt at making a mixed reality game that moves beyond just being a demo, a toy, or a prototype, and lays the groundwork for what games in mixed reality can be. Responsive to your environment, rich and engaging, and full of magic. Our hope is to see is hope is to see more devices moving forward that enables this type of gameplay um i think starship home also is due out um in summertime as far as i'm aware i think they're looking for around summertime it's uh, pretty close yeah and i've got a trailer as well which i'll i'll have up um on the video version of the pod but if you watch the trailer um you can obviously have all these different items on your on your like walls and such you've got like windows and your whole living room or wherever your room does really transform into like a, a full-on spaceship kind of space you know with all these That's elements cool. and it looks re- like if it works as as well as the the trailer does i mean i'm sure it is because it is captured it'll be directly in quest 3 it looks fantastic i want to see it i want to see it in a lot of different types of living rooms that's what i want to see in it, out of like a trailer for this i want to see how yeah. it looks in a lot of different spaces yeah that's fair i'm i'm intrigued to see how this game like this game is probably gonna you're gonna want to play it in the most brightest room maybe earlier in the day as possible where you have a lot of natural light because your mixed reality is just gonna look crisper. I hate the light nice. Dan I have I have all the, the windows closed you have the, okay so you 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 in terms of you love your graininess when it comes to mixed reality is what you're trying to say I just, I turn the lights on <laughs> well I go outside if I'm doing a lot of it I don't think I can play this outside though it sounds like I need a room no you need a room definitely because it's gonna you have windows on the walls you have basically I think there's like a little planter that goes on a table or a desk as well um, there's a few things that you're gonna need uh, spaces for so yeah you're gonna want to play this indoors um, it doesn't look like you'll need a big amount of space though on the trailer it looks like it's just a corner of a room um, and that should be enough so if you have like a potentially a semi-blank uh, corner of your room, maybe with a desk or something like that on a laptop, you should be able to make it work just fine. You don't even um, need four corners in your room, it sounds like. No, no, you just need a corner. So um, I'm very excited for this, to see something actually, an actual proper mixed reality game. And the thing is, right, a game like this coming out must say to everybody that mixed reality is not getting dropped for the Quest 3 light, um, when we had that Quest sure. 3 light episode um a few weeks ago where we we're thinking what they could they drop mixed reality is definitely not what but that's always going to be there because otherwise no one's going to support it um so i'm really excited for starship home i'm like really excited for it um it's good to have something because like uh, what's it first contact is is it first contact that's the mixed reality demo for that meta put put in yeah um for quest that's wicked like if they can make that like a full game in sort of sense of how the windows were and you can see the vr world like we just need more of that um, and have it like looking that crisp as well, which is what the trailer looks like as well. So 
I'm definitely excited for it. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Quest 3 um, has a higher attention than previous uh, headsets, which is according to uh, Chris Perrett, um, who mentioned this at GDC 2024. Uh, he is the meta. He is Meta's director of content. Um, Matter of director of content ecosystem, um, and, but basically he's been advising developers that Quest Three owners return has returned to continuously using apps at a higher rate compared to uh, Quest Two's um, or Quest Pros or any other for headset that that Meta Dan, put out before. I feel like this could be in part because a lot of the people who have Quest Three are people who love their Quest Two and upgraded and are mm-hmm. thus probably already kind of enthusiasts or like into VR or inclined to be into VR. Anybody who's spending at least 500 or $650 mm. is, uh, you know, that's a much bigger investment than the three to $400 of the quest two. And now only 150 or $200 of the quest two. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so you're right. Yeah. It's, it's easier to turn those into a paperweight. I, and so I'm just, I don't know. I don't really. I also, there's no real sense of how much longer is it? Is it a few seconds? Is it minutes? Is it hours? I mm-hmm. highly doubt it's hours, but you know, it could, it what exactly what is it? And, uh, but yeah, that would be my inclination is to believe that this is probably because the people who are buying quest threes are heavy users of VR or, or inclined or, Intend to be heavy users of VR. Yeah, it is more I, comfortable though. You know what? No one's paying four ninety nine and having it as paperweight, apart from me, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I just wanted to quickly tangent off this because I just I just remembered something. Um, I went on a little wa- wander, a little walk at around nine p.m. It was like pretty dark um, uh, last week, and I was just walking around the park, just getting some steps in and such. And I, someone in the, now, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the same in, in, in the States, but in Vancouver, no one closes their curtains or blinds. Like no one does that. It's just not a thing. Where in the UK, we're closing it immediately when it gets dark. Like you're not looking so in our a, living rooms. There's a lot of like peeping Toms around Vancouver. Huh? Everywhere. Like everyone's going to wide open. So when you're walking at night, you can see everything in people's houses because they don't care about crime because... It hardly exists, I guess, in in this neighborhood. Crime. <laughs> it's like nosiness. It's like I don't want or people nosy. seeing what I'm doing. But this British guy is nosy, right? Because I'm 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 not used to this. That's I'm what like, I'm saying. Look- I'm closing my shades. Yeah, <laughs> I'm walking around in this park and I'm looking at everybody's windows and <laughs> seeing what's going on. Like that's just you know, it's so easy. Anyway, so I'm walking across this park. And I see this one guy. In fact, I think it's just a kid, uh, it, although he looks like a teen kind of thing. And he's like moving, going crazy in the in this living room, or whatever. And I'm like, I don't, as, as I'm walking, I'm kind of walking towards him because it's just this like the the perimeter of the park. And then I realize, and I just get close. I end up crossing the road just to have a quick look. And he's right there in the living room. He's playing his Quest Three. And he's moving or like 360 around, just going crazy. He's using the soft strap. And I think he looks like he's playing playing a, a space pirate trainer. That's what it kind of looks like. He's um, shooting. Yeah, it looks like he's shooting and he's like literally going 360 on the spot and such. And I'm like, that kind of looks like space pirate trainer. Goes, I don't think that goes 360, does it? It's all in front of you, right? It's all 180. Okay, maybe it's not then. Maybe it's not. I don't know what he was playing. It was three. It was 360 and he was definitely shooting is what I'm trying to say. You he's should good. go back, dude. Unless he was playing some sort of Beat Saber in 360 mode, I don't know. Um, That's what I, I was thinking. Synth Riders 360, yeah, or something. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I, I thought he was shooting, but no, maybe he wasn't. You got to um, go back. <laughs> got go, go at back. least stick the podcast on his window or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. How do you was... like these apples? <laughs> Uh, but it was cool to see. It was cool to see. Um, I've never seen a Quest three or two out in the wild in a way of someone playing it and such. What? This isn't even in the wild. This is, so, this is one other person owning it and playing it in their home, Dan. Yeah, but I've never, never seen, seen it. I've never, I've never seen it. I've never seen just someone playing it, you know, and such like that. Apart from people, you don't who... know anybody else with a with VR. No, not and not in my like sphere. <laughs> wow. that's why i have the podcast so i can talk to you guys nobody's uh, nobody's been convinced at all to buy a quest that's i have crazy. i don't know anybody you gotta sell your friends i don't know anybody i have two no actually no i know one person sorry with vr but they have a playstation vr one um 
Oh, and they have a Quest uh, 2. Yeah, they have a Quest I 2. I mean, you had the PSVR 2 there for a while. You had both, and still you couldn't even play yeah, Walkabout I with did. them. I did. I did. Yeah, I know. Um, sorry, I do have one. I do have one friend who has a PSVR 1 and a Quest 2. Um, and every time I go to her house, she's like, let's play Beat Saber. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I do have one. But apart from that, yeah, no one. Uh, anyway, I mean, I don't I have that many, but yeah. Yeah, you bought everyone's you bought everyone's quest too. So <laughs> I bought some, and some of them bought them themselves after you know being friends with me. But like I use, I use my VR headset in in the wild, so to say, with, certainly weekly. Mm. Just trying yeah. trying to get this uh, to the surprise that you have in this. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to make it so it's normal. Make, make it so people see it ain't VR normal is over here. Normal. It ain't normal. Well, in people Vancouver. record me. Yeah. It ain't normal in Vancouver, but uh, yeah, people are always going to record you until Apple Vision Pro becomes normalized, <laughs> to be honest. Um, anyone dancing in the parking lot uh, is going to be recorded, let's be honest. Uh, anyway, uh, kind of bodes well to go to this next thing because Quest 2 has been discounted to $200. Um, Walmart also throws in a fifty dollar uh, store credit as well, so that's uh, basically one hundred and fifty dollars for that one hundred twenty eight gig Quest. So we're basically practically giving him away. The de- the two fifty six remains discontinued, and that's why a few episodes ago we did that Quest We Light episode because it is coming uh, sooner rather than later. I'm surprised it hasn't been announced yet. Maybe they are just holding off on it until maybe there isn't a specific date in mind and they're just trying to get rid wouldn't of it wouldn't it probably be their their thing in october that late you think they were they'll hold off until all the way till the october that seems like a it, all the rumors kind of point to q1 q2 um it seems kind of late yeah seems kind of late. i guess i guess so uh yeah that would probably be the latest that it comes out for sure definitely yeah probably yeah. just trying to run through all that run through all that uh all that stock before that we have can... all that stock yeah 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 absolutely um, i haven't been to a store in a while i don't have a good sense of how much i went to best buy recently and i did not see any quest twos there it was only quest three i saw the quest two demo but it was just quest three and at least on the on the floor um shout out to shout out to our discord member ninja ninja, ninja guy. guy vr he's ninja got a guy good, uh, he's got a youtube channel yeah yeah, shout out to him. Uh, he posted that he went to Walmart. He's in, I believe he's in Canada. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that. Um, and he went to Walmart and he found the PlayStation VR 2 for pretty much half the deal. price. It was on clearance. Um, it was it was practically nothing. He got, no, th- sorry, 300 USD. Um, it was, okay, I'm pretty sure it was in Canada though, but I could be wrong. Um, but $300 uh, USD, um, it was on clearance. And so he picked one That's up. That's a good deal. Um, because he was like, I can't just not pick it up for 300 USD. Yeah, um, compared seriously. Compared to I 550, should... I think it is. I should start checking open box. Yeah, he got it from his Walmart, but yeah. Um, okay, moving on to our fourth news story. And I don't think this one's even worth it. <laughs> Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord gets a Frozen Empire update um, as of, I guess, this week as, as you're listening to this. Um, this ties into the new movie that's just been released um, that got mixed reviews, I think, the new movie. But um, in the DLC, we've got new ghosts, we've got the new villain, we've got Avatar skins, and we've got new equipment uh, in there. It's just, they say it's their biggest update yet. So if you're still playing that game, um, you got a nice little... Um, update to download uh for this new I, I think it's just a free update to be honest um for i hope so <laughs> game's pretty expensive <laughs> yeah the game is pretty expensive anyway let's move on um meta to the fifth i guess uh, meta is funding new teams uh building for quest 3 uh this is oculus pu- publishing they have a new program called the Init- ignition program i just want to point this out <laughs> because <laughs> They they announced this in GDC 2024, and they Meta say they aim to help at least 20 small newly formed teams build rapid prototypes for Quest 3. Um, so I have a quote here from Meta. Uh, they say, in light of the recent challenges faced by game development industry and sweeping and the sweeping impact it had on platforms, publishers, studios, teams, and individuals, uh, Meta says that it's looking for games that are more mainstream than 
niche and broad in scope um, for compelling quest to eat interaction mechanics. Um, you could say potentially the uh, the mixed reality Starship Home could have been one on this program, to be honest. Um, so basically, if you're a developer listening to this and such, uh, basically, there's a form that you can fill out uh, through to August. Um, and then you basically have to pitch your idea to Meta. Um, and then basically, if they choose you, then they'll basically fund uh, your title um, and such and Pretty try cool. and help you get it shipped or, or not shipped, but maybe get it to a prototype where you're you know getting close and such. So um, a pretty cool incentive, especially what's been happening. Um you know, um, that's affecting everybody in games. So you think uh, you think you got to be exclusive to Meta? Um, maybe, maybe. I mean, they're looking for um, something that's uh, has is broad in scope with compelling quest three interaction mechanics. So, yeah, you, yeah. Oh man, this you know what they're doing, Dan? They're pulling all VR de- developers into MR with this. That's what they're trying to do. That's fine if they make a great MR game, you know. Let's move on to the the sixth new story, which kind of ties into this. Uh, Angry Birds VR Isle of Pigs gets MR support on Quest. Uh, By the time you're listening to this, it is out for free if you have that game. And it also adds hand tracking support to Angry Birds VR Isle of Pigs. I'm personally not interested in this, but Samson, are you? Have you got this game? Is this in your library? Oh, I have this game. I'm definitely interested in this, and I will be playing it for the next podcast. Nice, nice. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Probably, um, probably. I mean, yeah. I don't know that I'll try out the hand tracking, but I am curious about the MR aspect. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, moving on, uh, Asgard's Wrath 2 remains free until July uh, for new mm-hmm. Quest 3 owners. Um, as stated before many times on this podcast, uh, when the Quest 3 got announced, from the Quest 3 announcement all the way up to January 24th or somewhere around there, um, Asgard's Wrath 2 was going to be free if you picked up a Quest 3. Um, it's also $60, I believe, for everyone else um, if you didn't pick up a Quest 3. Uh, but they're extending that to July. So if you pick up a Quest 3 from now till July, you also get Quest 3. Uh, Quest 3, you get Asgard's Wrath 2 for free, um, which is Damn. their massive 60-hour-plus VR RPG game, which I still haven't played. There's it's, no way they make their money back on Asgard's Wrath 2, right? Giving it away for free for a year? No. No, no, of course not. No. That, Do you I think, think that people are buying... Though. Do you think people are buying Quest 3s for Asgard's Wrath 2? Mm, I don't think so because I don't think, you know, w- with this promotion, that's great. But I don't think they advertise the promotion well. Like, I feel like it should be on the box like every mm. other game bundle is with other consoles. Like, even the Wii, when it came out, it said in the corner, like Horizon, includes Wii yeah. Sports and such. And yeah, yeah, the PlayStation, obviously, it was quite clear that Horizon's Call of the Mountains in this one and such. Like, That's good, it's weird how it's not advertised that much. Like, it's advertised if you're in the VR space and, and if you're on their website, it says get Asgard's Wrath 2. But it's not, it should be on the box or at least a sleeve on the box. I mean, I guess the box does have a sleeve, doesn't it? But... You know, it should be on the box or at least on the back of the box saying Asgard's Wrath 2 or something like that, which is very clear and, you know, really shows off that you're getting this full, massive game, which, you know, got a 10 out of 10 from IGN. You know, it's still is touted as one of the best VR games um, out there from outlets. And this obviously not my opinion because I haven't played it, but they're just not really advertising it on the front of the box. So at least have it in the corner that says Asgard's Wrath 2 inside or something included or something yeah. like that or throw a sticker on the retail packaging or something like that a sticker yeah if they if you don't if you don't, if you if they want to keep the box so intact just get best buy to throw stickers on on the corner for them you know just like they did back in the day the ge- game game the games industry loves stickers on their on their gaming boxes and such let's be honest it's like gamestop i feel like would throw them on top <laughs> yeah exactly a new um, price but yeah, uh, I, is this still on your docket to go to play? Like, is this one ever, day? Are you ever going to jump in this? Yeah. Yeah, one day, one day, one day. Because I, I, into... I played a couple hours. I remember. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Nah, I got to finish Assassin's Creed. I haven't done that. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't talk. Uh, anyway, let's move on uh, to our penultimate news story: um, the sequel to Mist, uh, Riven. I want to say I said that right, but it might be might be Riven as well i think it's just riven 
What could be Riven? <laughs> Man, that sounds more. That sounds way more likely. But I don't uh, really know. I never played. Samson, you read this one. I don't want to read it. All anymore. right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, should I just? Uh, uh, no, it's only. Li- I was going to change how I pronounce the word every time, but just only <laughs> once. So. Riven is 1997 sequel to Mist. The remaster will also be available in flat screen. Includes new puzzles, expanded storylines, and breathtaking visuals. I do. So I once taught with a guy who loved Mist and loved Riven, and he would he was he told me all about it and how it blew his mind. It changed how he viewed gaming, and how he just loved exploring wow. the world and all that. But not not my type of game. I am I am into exploring and seeing cool worlds. So maybe I just get it to hop in and look around. Hmm. Maybe we'll get a walkabout Riven course. Yeah, um, I think I was reading the Upload VR article on this and they, they said uh, Mighty Coconut um, have hinted at it before, like when they were, they were talking about it, like this was way back and such. So uh, potentially, yeah, potentially, because uh, the Mist one, I think, went down well, I would say, potentially. Oh, I, I think know. people loved it. It was a great one. Yeah, it was that was a great course with the, all the fun like puzzle mechanics kind of thing and uh, it, like it was it was breathtaking. Course. And I think the teams worked well together and like they enjoyed work like sharing assets and working on it together. So I, I could see it. I could see it happening. I could see it yeah. happening. Yeah, there's definitely a relationship there, and it kind of be a bit of a tap in um, for that. So um, this nice also tap-in. is good reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even mean to make that happen, but sure. Um, I think it would be a real hole in one. <laughs> uh, this game, uh, Riven, Riven. I don't know how I why I can't say. Just it keep properly. going with it. But anyway, um, it's a longer game than Mist too. I think Mist is touted at around like six, seven hours or so, and Riven is just like I think it's like thirty. I think I read it's like thirty, thirty-three percent too long. longer as well. Oh, 33. Um, I thought you were going to say 33 hours. No, no, no. It's like a 10-hour game, basically. Um, that's just based on the, the flat screen versions back in 97 and such. But yeah, uh, like like you just said, this is available on flat screen too. I feel like these games are probably going to be a bit better in flat screen, but just really cool for people to jump in in VR um, if you're a fan of it. Um, I'm not sure how... Well, Mist was, Mist was more point and click, and I think Riven was more move around. Mm. free roam okay so it might bode well a bit a bit more yeah okay fair enough very well um i don't know if i'll pick this up just because i i always have a hard time with puzzle games in vr for some reason they're tough yeah i just find it and we're idiots (laughs) yeah let's go with that i think so dan (laughs) oh all right so part of the shell games the silent slayer at pax Mm -hmm. you have to you something is shattered basically and you're putting together you have like six pieces but they're not flat it's a pyramid and so i'm 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 so stressed out like i know people are watching the screen they're nothing i hate nothing more than having to do a puzzle in front of all these people yeah and i swear i felt like such an idiot like this thing took me so long and and i was just embarrassed for myself it was it was <laughs> terrible I hate it. I hated every. I don't know how anybody streams a puzzle game if they do. <laughs> so if we ever get back to the the Samsung plays uh, live streams, the puzzle games are not going to be on the on the list. <laughs> they'd just be boring. They'd just I be feel like they'll be so frustrating. Yeah. At pieces and and not knowing what to do, like a cubism yeah. stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Watch me think. Do you want me to segue into the next one? You segue, you got, you got it, you got it. All right. Go for it. That's my segue, I've already done it. Flat to VR Studios, a new gaming studio has been revealed. This is by VR publisher and marketing group Impact Reality, who has partnered with Team Beef, those behind Doom, Quake 3, Half-Life Mods, and more. They're looking to officially bring flat games to VR, with one game currently in the works for late 2024, or early 2025, most likely the latter, if it's like most things. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is pretty exciting, but it's definitely future, you know. I think this is great. Um, full disclosure, Impact Valley, we're part of the, I guess we're part of their group in a way. They help us get guests and such um, for the pod. So obviously Max Mustard, um, Sky Climb, the last two, uh, they were all through Impact. But I think this is a, an amazing 
uh, idea because the thing is with the the team beef um ports with doom and uh cabalistic port with half-life and such these are all unofficial ports like you have to side quest them um and such to to be able to play them uh where with this whole incentive is to bring official official uh ports from vr flat games um from flat game yeah. to vr and some of the most popular games you know resident evil 4 resident evil is a great example and also um grand theft uh, grand theft or grand trismo 7 another one on playstation vr as well as another great example where like there's there are a lot of games that would translate really well in vr and also just to have a vr mode um, I can see this working really great for PlayStation VR users more than anything, to be honest, because, you know, maybe they can license a PlayStation VR, uh, a, sorry, a PlayStation 5 game and just have a VR mode uh, potentially uh, for one of those games. It's always fun to, like, step into the game that you've been playing in, in flat screen or such just to see what it's like or have it have an own little mode separately. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I hope they pull through on it and um, do really well. And um, I'm intrigued to see what they're going to bring out at the end of the year. What it's exciting coming? stuff. For sure. All right. That will do for our long news stories there. Um, in part three, we'll cover uh, what Samsung's been playing, to be honest, um, and the games out this week. So we'll see you then. Let's Talk Oculus is available on all good podcast platforms and some rubbish ones as well. If you want to see the video version, it's available on YouTube and Spotify. And also, if you love us so much, then consider throwing us a dollar at patreon.com forward slash Let's Talk Oculus. Back to the show. All right, welcome back to part three. Um, in this one, what we've been playing and games out this week. Uh, for me, I'm just going to point out that I haven't played anything new. I've just been playing more Tiger Blade and loving, still loving every minute of it. Uh, I talked that one in to, for death. No, no, not not yet. No, not yet. No, no. no, no. But will you? Will oh, you? Will, will I beat it? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll try to. I, I'm having so much fun with it. Um, and I think there's ten worlds in there. So, yeah. I don't want to promise anything anymore, Samson. I don't want to promise anything. So. Yeah, don't promise. <laughs> um, it's an amazing game. Uh, look at last week's podcast if you do want to um, hear more about it. I did butcher it at the start when I was listening back to last podcast because very it's a very difficult game to explain in terms of mechanics wise. Yeah, you, if you just on watch. And on. If you just watch the trailer, you know you know what you're talking about. You know you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you're gonna, Samson, you need me to you need me to challenge you again because there was the last game that I said you wouldn't beat. I think I had to buy somebody a game, right? Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that you was... Made, you made sure you did it. Yeah, that was Seventh Guest. That was Seventh yeah, Guest, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was it, yeah. yeah. I love that game. It's so good, though. <laughs> anyway, it's Samson, tell game. us, uh, tell the world what you've been playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bury the lead. So first I'll talk about I got into World with three O's again. Uh, still still loving it. I did some verses. Uh, Pollinator and Red Rotor crushed, absolutely annihilated uh, me and my buddy Quick Chat. But we had fun. It, it wasn't complete annihilation, but it was pretty good. When you're playing the Pollinator, you got to, I feel like I, when I'm not on his team, I have to do quick guesses before he can really figure out where we are. Uh, so I try to get a quick sense and then just guess and hope I'm close so mm -hmm. that he, to you know, beat him to the punch. Anyway, <laughs> enough. Uh, you know, I got into 11 Table Tennis, Beat Saber, and Synth Riders again. Mm -hmm. Still enjoying the hell out of them. Synth Riders, I got into... I've I've kind of gotten some multiplayer going again with uh, Fiona, who's... A th yeah, Fiona from our Discord. Yeah. Uh, I think Void got in and a few others. A couple randoms joined, too, for, uh, for nice. a few songs. It's been a good time. Fiona won the uh, giveaway for Sky Climb. Uh, she did, she did. Uh, I actually didn't announce that on the pod I actually forgot when we did the pod last week but if you're in our discord I put in a giveaway we had three keys for sky climb and um, yeah we announced the winners and Fiona was just one of them so um, sometimes I might announce giveaways that are not even announced on the pod <laughs> so join us in the discord and you will get a chance on them <laughs> anyway yeah continue uh, anyway Sunday night pop at 10 people we got 10 people in the lobby Dan it's growing 10 p.m. Eastern wow. Sunday. We had 10 people. Uh, Red Rotor and Void. They they each made uh, freaking dope ass maps. Dan, one map Voids is uh, basically a, a one pillar that goes up, and then there's just like 
random shit that just kind of spirals up around it. It's it almost feels like a tornado hit, and it's like or tornado frozen in time. It's kind of what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of nooks and cranny and such. It's very fun, very vertical map, which is I love just flinging myself and flying as people know. And then Reds is more expansive. It's kind of got a, a city center. It's it's more of a I don't know if Voids is a story or not, but Reds definitely has an, an alien attack story going on. And it is mm-hmm. the custom maps in Pop One are pretty cool if you have time and are creative. Neither of which I have. <laughs> Hey, you have uh, a podcast. You, you're creative enough. That, that's, that's all you need. Exactly, exactly. No. Uh, though behind the door, you, you're a, you're you're the anchor to much of the creativity <laughs> part of the of that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, regardless, I also uh, so with at PAX East, one of the game cats brought their. I picked them up, and they brought their PS5 and PSVR to into the lobby and mm. was basically running tutorials and introing people. And so they, uh, they showed, I, they offered me right to get in and I got into first thing I did with synth riders, Dan, first thing I noticed the haptics on the controllers. Yeah. When you hit the orbs, you feel them. And I was just like, Holy shit. It's yeah. like somebody took my B haptics vest and put it on my hands. Yeah. Yeah, the Incredible haptics are stuff. no joke in the PlayStation VR two. Yeah, there's a reason why they're expensive. That's an expensive headset. Like it's the haptics are phenomenal. Yeah. Even the head haptics too. Um, I'm not sure I if didn't... you had anything from synth riders, but like if you're playing a no. game like Pistol Whip or something, and you get hit, or Call of the Mountain has it as well, and such. Um, so I did them. get into Call of the Mountain. I got into the, just the training area, so I shot some bows. I did some mm-hmm. climbing. It, it's a game that looks kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know that I'm like that, that into, I was never too into the IP, but it looks cool. Yeah. I feel like I noticed some of that blur, but it's really bright. I did notice that. Like yeah. you feel like it's, it's for the daytime. Yeah. To be fair, to be fair to them, Horizon, I've not played, I've never played the second one, um, but the Horizon Call of the Map, no, Call of the Map, the, the first one, I forget what it's called, um, but the first game is very, very vivid anyway. Like that's just always been its color palette anyway so mm. it looks very pretty but it's also so colorful and bright and such like that so it's the same it's exactly the same in vr so it's not like they added more or anything like they if it's exactly the same palette yeah. so. i went to it, touch grass and i couldn't do that they said did they, you just do the training grass. area they didn't put you in the like the little two minute kind of boat ride that it's like a demo in there no because i was standing and they figured i wanted to move it's fair. Um, and then I got into Res Infinite, which was fucking awesome, dude. That was yeah. so cool. You're just shooting with your eyes, or you're not. You're aiming with your eyes, rather shooting with the button. And I've been in touch uh, with the person who gave the demo, and I think I'm going to try and go back and meet up with them because they're kind of local to me. Mm. And I want to play. I definitely want to play more Res Infinite. I want to play some Switchback that I didn't get into. Yeah, and yeah, there's a few more things I definitely want to try out, but it did not sell me on spending eleven hundred dollars on both. But it was but cool. It was cool. It was cool as hell. Now that the PSVR two is available on PC, basically, or almost like available, like it's, it's it's right around the corner. Um, would that make you want to buy it? Because you'll be able to use. No, it I've already got a PC headset, so it's not. Yeah, it's, it still need a sale. I will say it was way more, I didn't use it that long, right? I was in it probably under 20 minutes, under 25 minutes. Uh, but it, it did feel pretty comfortable. I was surprised at how comfortable it was. And I love that button press that just extends yeah. it. So it's really easy to get on and off. Yeah, and there's some elastic on there so you can bring it forward and such yeah. like that. And, you know, it's the ergonomics have always been great at the PlayStation VR one was a little bit better. I thought when it comes to ergonomics, if, if I'm really nitpicking, but, um, the ergonomics was really, really cool. How was the controllers? Like just holding the, I mean, like I said, and orbs That's and what, such. Like, is, like I it, said, the, the vibrating, the haptics were incredible in and yeah. synth riders. I didn't really do much shooting. Yeah, uh, I guess so. so. I, I didn't get any, I didn't get any real, like, uh, 
uh, hapt- what are, I don't know what they call those special triggers, but whatever haptic, that is. Yeah, yeah, haptic triggers and such. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I saw you in the Discord. You were like, uh, you, you shocked or something like that that I sold it <laughs> yeah. after you tried it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I just keep it just for the eye tracking things. Like, re- like, yeah, for those, and and I eye guess you know, sick. for you, Resident Evil. I don't, I'm not. I'm less into those than you are. Yeah, the the eye tracking on PlayStation VR two is amazing. Um, I do feel like it's menus the with it. Yeah, yeah, even just control me- in Call of the Mountain, you control your men- menus and such with your eyes, and so- it's it's so cool, you know. Um, but yeah, the PS VR two this. Well, yeah, there'll be stories written about this one, but uh, interesting piece of hardware. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's overall just solid. I just think, I just think no one really, not many people care about it on PS Five. There's not many PS Five gamers that care about it. It's, it's, a, it's a weird, weird where it is. Um, it's a real shame, but you never know. It's still early days. It can still come back from the dead. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go so far as to call it dead. But yeah, it's it, not dead, it, it but... could use, it could use a sale for sure. Yeah. Shall we go into the games out this week? Let's go in the frames this week. We've got three games. Uh, I'll start off here, and then you can go into the next one. Oh, you one. want to do two of them? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn it. Um, okay, maybe I'll just I'll start off anyway. Uh, medieval uh, Dynasty New Settlement. That is just a bunch of words put together as a title. <laughs> it's not even, That doesn't really flow well. But anyway, um, dive into the rich tapestry of medieval life with medieval dynasty new settlement an exhilarating vr spin-off game that seamlessly blends sandbox role-playing simulation and exploration set against the backdrop of the meticulously crafted medieval landscape the player is tasked with the monumental challenge of founding and nurturing a thriving settlement and starting their dynasty as a product protagonist, your primary focus will be on the challenges of survival, resource gathering, and the ambitious task of creating a lasting dynasty. Utilizing the immersive capabilities of VR technology, you will physically engage in the construction of buildings, cooking, hunting, cultivating, or cultivating fertile fields. Doing all of this and much more will ensure experience the gratification of watching your settlement rise from humble beginnings to a majestic, majestic medieval hub. That is medieval dynasty new settlement. I do not like nice. the name, but it sounds pretty cool. What what are you, what are you thinking there? Uh, well, kind of lost in survival, resource gathering. Fair enough. Uh, the real <laughs> gameplay aspects of this game, I'm not that into. But yeah. if you're into those things, it sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan in like pure survival. I, I like survival elements um, and such. But when it's just like the ba- the whole game is based on survival, uh, I also think graphically. I mean, graphics are not the biggest thing in the world, but graphically it looks a bit odd. Um, it gives you some like some sort of RuneScape vibes. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> when you look at the trailer, um, but yeah, so it's not for you. It's not for me either. Moving on. Moving on. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to pick one here. Well, you got to pick the second one, the, the, the last one. I can read knows. them. It doesn't matter what order I go in, though. You'll oh, just yeah. read the other. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's All right. Fair. Uh, Tropico. Tropico is rich in resources, ripe with potential, and crying out for a leader with extraordinary vision. As El Presidente transformed this untapped pocket of paradise into an industrial powerhouse, a tourist playground, and a budding superpower, all under your firm but fair hand. Take hold of the levers of power with the MetaQuest's motion controllers and lead your people by the hand to a brighter future using custom-built VR interfaces and intuitive gestures. I believe this is uh, sort of like a god game, right? Where you're kind yeah. of like a civil, you're uh, yeah. like a civ, where you, you you got it all in front of you. Exactly I'm right. I'm kind of interested in this. Uh, like I still have this little cities game that I still haven't gotten into, hmm. but I love the idea of these games. I did get into the townsman one, you know, for a while. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. feel like this is more more similar to uh, little cities. 
or Cities VR than it is Two Towns. Tropico is a. I never a, played. It's a big series on there. You yeah. know, I think I think Tropico Six is the latest game, and I'm pretty sure that's been like that for a long time. Um, people love this game. It's one of those games like it's a PC centric game, like it's like Civilization or. Um, I think Napoleon's one of them. Um, Age of Empires to a certain degree, but not as not as huge. I would say I'd love Age of Empires, but like Tropico is just one of those games that you know uh, it's a staple PC game. It's a point and click kind of thing, you know. And you're building your mega cities, your towns, and you're managing resources and all that stuff. And um, I, it's not it's not a game for me. I don't really play these games. I really liked, like I said, Age of Empires back in the day, and. Um, to a much lesser extent, roller to- roller coaster tycoon, but that's nothing. Oh, I did like that, yeah. you know. But I, I really like those games back in the day. But um, it's not really for me. I, it's just a bit too much time being spent on something like this, and yeah, yeah I don't really sink my teeth in this. Of time. But it'd be interesting. Do you want me to read the last a, one? I know you're. Uh... Oh god. I was about to say the the point and click. Um, having that into into VR is gonna be interesting because they have they have a new control scheme and all that. I stuff. am curious how, how these games works, normally yeah. don't translate well to flat screen um, gaming like consoles and such. Um, they, I think they're getting better, but they they normally don't. So the piece, yeah, you need a mouse. Yeah, yeah, I can see I can see this translating quite well in VR. To be honest, being able to place your objects down there and such, and like it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you go for it because my my voice is dying here. (laughs) It's the least I can do. Sky Climb. Introducing Sky Climb, the ultimate virtual reality platform game. Get ready to embark on an exhilarating journey through the skies of various captivating worlds, all while defying gravity and confronting daring challenges. As a hero of a fantastical balloon universe, your mission is to restore harmony by rescuing guardians from the clutches of corruption across seven distinct realms. Sky Climb offers a thrilling multiplayer mode where you can test your skills against five other players in an action-packed championship. But the excitement doesn't end there. With our innovative builder mode, you can unleash your creativity and design your own levels. Dive into a world of endless challenges and share your creations with fellow players, putting your platforming skills to the test. We obviously we spoke about this a lot last week. Um, we had VR Monkey on the show, um, and you can link them back to that interview and such. But um, I haven't played this since the, um, playing it for the podcast last last week. But um, yeah, I think this is a game that some people might sleep on just because of kind of what it looks like. Uh, might look a bit too kiddie and such. But same with Max Mustard as well as another platform game and such. But I, I really don't think you should sleep on it. It's it's actually a really fun game, uh, a unique kind of platformer with its unique controls. Um, so definitely check it out if you have the chance. And there'll be a twenty five percent code in the referral codes probably uh, when it comes. If you're into throwing yourself around or just so the, the, that kind of cool VR or not necessarily cool. Cause I think it's cool, but maybe other people don't it's certainly unique though. So unique VR me- moving mechanic where you can fly, you can fling yourself. Uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. If you've ever yeah. been listening to podcasts and you heard me talk about grab it's, you might like this if you have liked that. For sure. Playing with the like physics in VR a little bit. Um, yeah, to try and beat Precisely. scores and such for sure. Perfect. Um, I think that will do for a pod because my voice is definitely losing right here. Um, that but will do. That'll do. Uh, thanks for everyone for listening. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, uh, next week we should have a really fun podcast for you. Okay, so stay tuned uh, for that. Uh, and don't forget about week five of Walkabout. Now, Samson, take us away. What it's you got for the week. people? And and just like last time, before I wrap this up, uh, we will be taking at least one week off after uh, this week five. Yeah, yeah. Do what you love, and the necessary resources will follow. Absolutely. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next week.